Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can hear you. Hallelujah. Are we live? Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, 
Let the come the Holy Ghost, Holy Anointing, oh, Anointing, God's Anointing, oh, Anointing, Holy Spirit, oh, Anointing. Good morning and welcome to Armani Temple, Church of God in Christ, Powerful Living Sunday School class. I'm Deacon Alan Lewis and today's subject will be justification through faith. Coming from Romans 5, 1 through 11, the Bible of truth. So Apostle Paul teaches that because of Christ's sacrifice, we have been justified before God and pronounced guiltless, guiltiness. Our aim today is by the end of the lesson, we will evaluate the relationship between faith in Christ and the justification in the sight of God. Repent of the personal failures obtained in the peace of God's giving and celebration celebrate our justification through Christ's faith. The memory verse, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5 and 1, King James Version. Let us go before the throne. Father God, we thank you this morning for allowing us another day, for waking us up and starting us on our day. And we thank you that each and every person that are listening via live stream, social media, whatever platform they're listening to today can hear the word and the word reaches their hearts, their minds and their soul. And we ask this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen. The lessons overview for today, people are often struggle with, with uh, fractured relationships that may or may not be the cause or how these relationships are, are to be reconciled. Only justification by faith through Jesus Christ can lead to repentance, reconcile, and the ultimate uh, the rupture of the relationship between God and humanity. What you should learn today is the believers uh, through justification is adopted into the family of God. And the Bible application is Christians rejoice in being justified by faith. Believers are at peace with God. Romans 1, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Two, by whom we have access by faith unto the grace where within we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Three, and now, and not only by but the glory of the tribulations, also knowing that tribulations work in patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. Four, excuse me, five, and hope make it not a shame because the love of God is shared about, and the hearts of the Holy Ghost is given unto us. Six, for when we were yet out without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly, seven. For scarcely for the righteous man will one die, yet preadventure for one good man, some would have dared to die, eight. But God commanded his love toward us, that while yet we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, nine. For much then, but now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. 10, for if when we were yet enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And 11, and now only by, but so we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Blessed to the hearing and the reading of the word. Amen. 
So we're going to start the lesson off talking about the Apostle Paul. Some of us know that the Apostle Paul was once uh, an enemy of God. Apostle Paul was sent, was one that was sent out. He was called to be equipped and he was sent out to, to establish the word among his people. The Apostle Paul was also an apostle that was born out of due time. In 1 Corinthians, it talks about 15 and 8, which was after the ascension of Jesus that went into heaven. The original name, his name was Saul. He was known in the land as Saul from Tarshish. He had a very bad reputation. Again, he was an enemy of the church in the early days. And on the road of Damascus, he was met by Jesus. And the Lord had plucked him out of that mindset because that same zealous that he had to destroy the Christians, he converted him over and made him an oh, apostle. And now he had the same zeal to save and to strive and to not only prosecute, but to get the word out. Paul clarified that the doctrine and teaching of salvation is by grace. So we go into justification. Before Jesus comes, there is an absolute redemption from sin and no opportunity for resurrection for eternal life. In the present case, Paul proves that the humanity stands, in, stands guilty before God. We all stand guilty. It clearly states that no one can ever be saved through their deeds, their good works, their physical circumstances. Only the obedience of the law of Abraham was an example. But Paul taught that among all could have achieved the right to stand through the faith of God. And in chapter four, he talks about it. <clears throat> Paul established that Abraham was the father of faith. And not just uh, in the Hebrews, but among all believers, all believers, and, and that God had raised him from the dead. And he received him as Lord and Savior. And Abraham's spiritual seed, in verse 25, Paul con uh, concludes that this discussion that Christ was raised from, was raised for our justification. So justification is the first blessing for the Christian life. It carries with it many blessings and the believers are justified. They are everything God has to give. So we look at Paul examples. Our salvation is justified and bring, bringing us peace with God. Without justification, we are enemies of God and Christian. And based on the justification, Paul also signs uh, uh, sings with joy the confidence in God, accepting God at his word and accomplished him and the human effects uh, could not. But it is given to believers that peace with God. So as we look at these verses, and we can think back on Paul, why, why Paul is the one that's writing this. Well, like I said before, Paul was the one who was once, in the early days, he was against the Christian church. Paul had, it, had, had the authority to go out. He had the authority that thought he had the right mindset, and he was doing a good deed by prosecuting Christians. But the justification is the sentence that is a acquittal. God acquits us from guilt in a condition of grace. Justification is, is, is a blessing of salvation and it carries with it all other blessings of Christian life. So Paul launches into this explanation of the eight attained blessings of justification by faith. Because we are justified by faith, we have peace with God. Mm -hmm. And then he says, because of this peace with God, access to God and the presence and standing is grace and joy and hope, the love of God and the Holy Ghost. We are saved from wrath. Oh, that's important. And we're saved by his life. A literal translation in verse one, since we have been justified by faith, let us have peace with God. Peace is very important. You wanna be on the right side, not on the left side, because God's enemies, we pray that they will come to repentance and understand who God is. 
The point of accomplishment fact is it's illustrated that justification is an instantaneous act that takes place the moment a sinner receives Christ as his or her own savior. It's just that simple. You can just be an uh, enemy of God on one side and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and just that quick, it's instantaneous, now you're on the right side. So if you draw a line in the sand, which side are you on? The phrase we have peace with God could be translated, let us have peace with God, uh, is from the Greek uh, present tense verb. And it's, uh, it, which means it's telling us that we are now being, we can now enjoy the peace of God and we have the privilege of the believers and we are justified to have peace with God. Paul encourages believers to realize that the, they have the joy and the privileges that are included with that. This is also a natural uh, uh, consequences of, of God. You don't want to be on the outskirts of God and think that you're doing OK, like Paul was in his early days. And until he had that uh, uh, rude awakening by the, the master's experience and knocked off the horse and and had to be reconverted. But God was still saw something in you like he saw in Paul. And he wants us to keep going forward with him because he had fallen sin, nature, humanity at, and, and, uh, at the state of, of hostility in, with God. In other words, sinners are God's enemies. You can't be doing anything and use God's name. You can't be a sinner and say, in God's name, I'm going to do this. No, 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 no. It's not going to work. It's God don't hear none of that, what you're saying. And, and he said, and when you're justified, that the hostility is removed. The hostility is turned into a relationship that is restored unto us. And by having that, now we have peace and we have the awareness of peace with God. And it brings a sense of peace to our soul. It says, by whom that we have access until this grace where within we stand. It said, not only does a uh, Christian remove the hostility, Christ remove the hostility, but it is, uh, and this is between God and the sinners, but it also give us, we have been redeemed and we have access. In the days where they had kings, you couldn't just go up to the king. You have to have permission or you have to have special access to talk to the king. It said, into this very presence, the Hebrew temple, it's the president where God had dwelled in a room called the Holies of Holy. Only the high priests were allowed to go through this once a year to atone the, the, the sins of the people. Only once a year. Can you wait a year for someone to atone for your sins? Isn't it better to have your sins atoned right now by yourself if you can just repent and go to God yourself? It's uh, this curtain that represented the separation of a sinful humanity from God. When Christ died on the cross, the, the, the veil that had, uh, had the, the, the veil that the separated the sinful nature of, of man and that holiness of a holy, that veil ripped in two. When it ripped in two, now it allowed us now as believers to go to the throne ourselves. And we have access to the throne because we are no longer enemies of God. He said, when Christ died, hmm, the holy of holy was ripped down in the middle, straight down the middle. And he said that represented that, that, that elimination of the separation. We're no longer separated now. He said we have access to God and Christ's eternal sacrifice on the behalf brings us into the presence of God. So we can go into to God's presence on our own if we believe. If just that's just as simple. It's a spontaneous relationship. Being justified by faith also brings us into a new permanent standing with God. Oh, my. He said the old things that we used to do are no more. We are have now into a new thing. We can, uh, we now have the divine favor of God upon us. And Christ uh, uh, has uh, faithfully committed to the Lord. We are faithfully committed to the Lord. It is not a, uh, not a, a declaimer that the, back, the backsider is to continue living in a sinful style, but he has the knowledge of Christ had died for it. If Christ has died for you, why would you want to live in the way you used to live? Why would you want to return back to your old ways when Christ has started you off on a new path and a new beginning and a new way of life? You should just continue to strive forward to see what else is in store. And we look at this. It says, the basis for our new standing is obtained by grace and no one can stand before God with his deeds or his character or his righteousness. 
definitely not self-righteousness. You're not going to get anywhere with self-righteousness. It says our new standings is a result of God's unmerited faith. And he said unmerited favor, the holy living is an expression of the gratitude for God's grace and mercy that he's bestowed upon us. Therefore, we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God and the, and the glory spoken here is what? Twofold. First, we we have the Spirit's divine presence from the heaven. Second, uh, more immediately, we have the hope that brings us glory to God through what? In our own tribulations. He said, Paul says the glory is rejoicing and tribulation because we realize it is heaven's way of teaching us the, the patience and the long suffering. Patience is the confidence enduring the things hoped for, the difficulties of what we wish to remove. So we won't get something out of our life. We can't do them by our own means. We have to turn to God for his way of removing them. The spiritual fruits of presence, of patience, is seen in the humbleness or the humble perseverance because it's real, the realization that nothing comes against that that has been allowed by God. So no, the enemy can't come in and just attack you out of the blue. He got to get permission from God because you're one of God's chosen children. You have to be on God's side to get this benefits. Mm -hmm. He said the patient that is being, uh, that is, that's bringing about experience is talking about, it's a word that which is translated as the proof. He said, if you live in a righteous life and you're, and you're proving it, not only will you do it in your day-to-day -day life, but people, how you look when you walk out the door and people see you on your job site, are you living the same proof? The uh, experimental evidence is that the believer throughout grace. You're gonna live the same way every day. There won't be no differences in your change of life. When you walk in your grocery store, you at the market, wherever you're at, you're gonna have the same on you. You're not gonna hang out with the people you used to hang out with. That's gonna be the proof and the evidence. Believers enter into this period of tribulation uh, permanently to endure what's uh, the favor of God. Our, our permanent endurance is a reward eventually into victory. Uh huh. And our, 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 over the circumstance and over the victorious experience, it proves the faithfulness to God to deliver us from future trials. He said, because you have to start with something small and, and, and God will just keep on increasing. This kind of takes us back to the mustard seed. If you've got a mustard seed of faith, God will keep on increasing as long as you're doing what God dwelled in your life for his will. Now, if you're going to go outside and start doing things on your own, you're not going to get God's favor on that. It's going to have to, you come to the acknowledgement of who he is. Another means of, of, of this is the testing of proof is, is to establish our character because it is made evident through patience of endurance. He says, we have this hope in two distinct ways. He said, one is uh, successful stages of the Christian life. First is immediately upon believing along with the sense of peace and abiding in the access of God. When you have peace, with God, you're going to be willing to abide to whatever he's given you to do. You're not going to go outside of that peace. You're not, not going to be the one trying to break the relationship with God. But the world has a different thought process. The world is going to be tugging against your peace, tugging against your 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 your, your relationship you have with God. It's going to always try to lure you out. Next, you grow after the reality of our faith has been proven through the patience and endurance of trials. Hope we result for the things we're looking away from ourselves to the cross. He said, look at the cross. When things start getting too painful and too, you can't bear it no more. Look and remember the cross. Remember what Christ done. Look into the cross at ourselves and be transformed into the image of Christ. In other words, put yourself back on the cross. When you say, this is too hard for me, look back at the cross and look what Jesus did for you. Because Jesus did more for us than we could do for ourselves. He said, the hope is based on the faith of the of the." The nurture through the experience. He said, you're going to have to go through some things. Christ told us that when we, he said, they hated me, they're going to hate you too. So we have to know these things. And it said, and five says, he said, our hope of heaven, which is uh, proposed of uh, the faith, is the confidence and the expectation of future good. He said, our faith is assured us that in heaven we will be, we will be ours, and the hope of expectation is anticipated. Can you anticipate being in heaven right now? Can you think about all the things that you want to do when you get there? He said that that's still there, but don't be sidetracked from 
the worldly things. He says, he said, and these things are hope and, 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 and in the glory of God, we will never make us ashamed like an empty hope of those that do these things because the basis on the love of God, uh, it is not our love, of, it's not our love, but it's the good love of God, but it's his love on us. And then it is shed abroad. And he said, because it's shed abroad, he poured forth. In other words, and literally he's saying that the blood and the wine is figurative of his love of the Holy Spirit in himself. God loved us, what? Loved us and the Holy Spirit. And he loved us so much that it's seen in the dwelling and the presence of the Holy Spirit. So if you haven't experienced the Holy Spirit, you might want to just check to see if you are a child of God. You might want to get down and repent of some of those things you've done. And as you repent of those things, then you'll start to see a transformation in your life. And so let's look at this. I, this. This lesson gets me excited. And so I have to just stop for a minute and pray, do a praise break. If you just join us, we're at the Monty Temple Church of God in Christ here in the beautiful city of Temecula. We are now on verse 5 out of Romans uh, 1 through 5. And we're talking about the justification through faith. And as we're moving on, so this question is, can you define justification? Mm -hmm. Okay, justification is a, a sentence of acquittal. God acquits us of guilt. It's a condition of his grace. God sees us just as if we have never sinned. When God can wipe away your sin, you don't have any sin with God. You know, you're not a sinful person anymore. Your old nature has been removed. So why would you want to go wallop in the mud again and get it back on you? When God has cleaned you and said, set you apart, you now have a new start. Oh, my goodness. Identifying with Christ because we are justified. We have a new standing with God and with the union. And then being in this means that we identify with them unto death, like the, the burial and the resurrection. And he said, we go back and you see that in Romans 6, 1 through 8, because of our identification in Christ, we stand in the, in the presence of the high, the highest privileges. He said, not only does God declare us not guilty, but he sees us and he draws us near to him. It's all about what we can do. No, it's all about what God has already done. It's all about what God has already done. He's already paid the price. He said, after discussing uh, uh, the justification and the blessings, Paul discusses the depths of God's love. The apostle Paul uh -huh, is still talking here, highlights the absolute inability of the humans to deliver themselves from the grip of sin. See, you can't get yourself out of sin, but God can get you out of sin. But you have to turn yourself over to God to get out of sin. And he said here, he said, God, God sends one out from heaven. And, he, and the one that he sent from un, for out from heaven, he came out to save the ungodly. That was us, you and I. When we were still in the sinful stage, God sent his only begotten son to this earth. And when he sent him to this earth, his job was to redeem us, to draw us back to him, to declare his people back to him, to draw us. And it refers to who lives the impure, the wicked, and the sinful life, people with little regard of God. And in their minds and in their hearts, Christ offered himself as a sacrifice to the cross for the weak and the sinful. Because when you're in sin, you're weak. You can't get out. That's why you can't get out because you're too weak. You need God. And because of that, he said, that's why he, he went to the cross. He said he went because you were too weak to get out yourself. He went for us, for you. What, what a thought that God died for the ungodly. Amen. It says six. He says, well, when when yet we were sinners, he sent out in due time, uh, Christ died for the ungodly. At this point in time, uh, Christ offered himself as an eternal sacrifice when he was yet yet in, uh, uh, without strength. Mm -hmm. And he said he went where they're powerless and delivered ourselves. He said, you can't fight yourself out of, we already hear the saying about, you can't fight yourself out of a wet paper bag. <laughs> That's, all you have to do is push. But if you ain't got the power to push, you can't get out. So that means you're going to need some help. And the help is Jesus. And the help is God, his only begotten son. And you have to call on him. Uh huh. And he says here, we look at this. And it says, you read 
He said that they're the powerless of themselves to be delivered. He says ready to perish. They were ready, ready to perish. And all they had to do was just call on the name of Jesus. He says Christ's death revealed three properties for God's love. First, the ungodly, for those who, who are characterized as sinful nature and repulsive in the eyes of God. Secondly, he died when the ungodly were without strength and nothing stood between humanity and the uh, Dalmatian, but divine compassion, okay? Compassion. And third, uh, Jesus died in due time. It was, it was the most appreciated. Uh huh. Jesus sacrificed his life at Calvary. The phrase in due time show us that God has always been involved with the human history. He ain't never been without it. He's always been there. Even before the, the time that we even got here, he was already in the midst of it. Nothing catches him by surprise. The, uh, the, good, the good Lord, OK, had always planned to send Christ to die for us. And, and he made the initial announcement by uh, humanity falling from grace. He said, this comes out of Genesis 3 and 15. Then at the, at the time, at, at the just time, the right time, God sent his only begotten son to, to teach, to minister, and to die for the sinful. God always moves in due time. He said, if you're, you don't go out there puffed up now, uh, sinners. Uh, believers, don't go out there and get yourself all puffed up. This ain't a, a fight for your big brother, your big sister. And God wants you. He wants you. So don't be getting yourself in some kind of court and then call on God. You might have to take a few lumps there because your brother and sister can't get you out of that. That's something you started. Now, you, what, what, what God has done, he's, he's, he saved you, so now you have eternal life. That means Paul went through some things. Remember, Paul was the one who got shipwrecked. Paul was beaten. Paul was left for dead. Paul can tell you all this because he's been through all of these things, but yet he still believed on Christ. The sacrifice, the scarcely uh, for the righteous man that would die for the preventer of the good man, and some would dare to die. Well, what does that mean, huh? The Apostle Paul now, he, he processes it and he, he, limit, he illustrates that the compassion for a few, for a few, would uh, would be willing to sacrifice their life for a righteous man or a person with exceptional character. He said a few more might be willing to die for a man who, uh, beside being uh, exceptional, is also distinguished for uh, goodness, is the benefactor of society. But the good and glamorous con contrast here is when men might do for each other, displayed by his love while we were yet sinners in this state, uh, in this state and the absolute rebellion against Christ died for us. When we were still fighting and, and fussing and shaking our hands at Christ and, and mocking Christ and, and doing all things ungodly, Christ still died for the ungodly so they could be saved. He didn't want not one to perish. God's love. Paul pens in one of the most uh, beloved sins ever written. But God commanded his love toward us, and while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Oh, yeah, Christ died for us. Christ's death was as clearly demonstrated as divine love in action, uh, which is what the Christian means. Uh, he commanded his love to us uh, and uh, to us and love our enemies. He commanded us to tell us. He said, you, he said, if you love your enemies long enough, they won't be your enemies. Oh, we got some. We got something to learn here. Oh, we got some love. He said, "Now, how do I do that?" <laughs> he said, "You keep on loving them. Keep on trusting God." <laughs> he said, <laughs> "You got to keep on doing it because it ain't gonna come. It ain't gonna be easy." You know, Paul went. Paul went through some stuff. He said the humility was a, a total rebellion against God, and he said they were servants and they were evil ones, and they demonstrated their contempt for God by their lifestyle, okay? And we see that today. It's, it's still out here. It, they haven't moved, it's still out here. The, the, the contentment of God and the way people are living and the lifestyles and how they're uh, uh, going on and on. We, 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 we can't do that. They were allied. They say they, they, they demonstrate, it's, it's drum, it, it drum. The picture he draws here is, is dramatic at how, how far we were away from God, how much we were allied away from God. 
alienated from God. We was outside the box. We weren't in God's presence. We were outside of God's presence, fighting and bickering and, 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 and trying to get ahead of that person or trying to get ahead of that person and stepping on this person. We were nowhere near God's anything. Mm. But we were God's enemies. And he said we were like war. We were fighting and shaking our fists at God. And, and But God still loved us so much that he sent from the glories of heaven his son to the filthy world. And he clothed them. Wait. He clothed them in what? This sinful flesh. Oh, my goodness. Jesus came to earth in us and was put in sinful flesh. But yet he didn't sin. He was put in it, but yet he didn't sin. And he took that to the cross, to the cross on our behalf, on our behalf. No great expression of love has ever or will ever be made. That's amazing look. That's amazing look. Because you and I, we, it, you better not step your toe in the dark. Tell me, tell me that's godly, what you said. I, I'm just asking. I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. Let me take a break. If you just got joining us right now, we're a mighty temple, Church of God in Christ. We're in the beautiful city of Temecula. We're in verses 9 through 11 of Romans 5, 1 through 9. 1 through 11, excuse me. And we're in verse 9 now. In the final verses, Paul continues to expound upon the benefits of being justified. We are justified and saved with God, from God's wrath. That's amazing right there. And the atone is made with one, with what we were made with one, with God, which is the blessing that gives us the joy. You heard the expression, the world didn't give it to me, the world can't take it away. The joy that I have is down inside of me. That, and that, that, that's where that comes from. Because if, you got, if you're one with God, you have a joy. You, you have something inside of you that nobody else has except the believer. We have been reconciled to God and therefore saved by the life of Christ. And Paul tells us in this phrase much more. Uh, and again, he tells about it in verse 10 and 11. He says, and not only so, he piles all these benefits on top of each other, right? One after another for to, to, to tell you that uh, Paul is the overcome with the positive nature. He takes all the negative things that have happened in your life and you put them on top of each other and you still come out with a positive nature. You've been changed. That's the love of God. That's the love that you can get by coming to Christ. The justification through blood, through Jesus' blood, has moved us from the helplessness to reconcile. We're no longer under the God's wrath. Oh, that's that's the most important part. We're not we're not going to be the ones that's going to get to receive the wrath. We should. Excuse me. We share his life, which leads us to the joy, the joy that's unspeakable joy. Uh huh. He said, having been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of the sacrifice of Christ. Christ's death restored a relationship with us. God, while we were yet in open rebellion against him, since we're now reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. It's, a, it's, it's Christ's sacrifice that offers us to people that anticipate this uh the last appreciation for God loved Christ, labor, and on, on our behalf, much more love he will do for the remaining to be done. He said to receive this atonement brings overflowing benefits and reconcile. He said, why wouldn't you want those benefits? Those benefits are, are given to you freely. Mm -hmm. Freely. He said, I'm not only... So referring back to the, the blessings that Paul mentioned previously, but he said, uh, we will not find the joy in a newfound peace, access, and standings, love, and hope, and dwelling in salvation. We have also rejoiced in him and God himself. He said, we find this joy in God for what he has done for us and for, what, and for who he is. You got to love God for who he is. We can't, we can't love, if, if you start hating on someone, I'm, I'm saying hate, I'm, I'm going to use that uh, just loosely. Yeah, if you hate on someone, you can't be saying you love God. You have to have the love like God has so you can love that person. And, and God loves him. God loves the sinner. What you say? <laughs> Woo, our joy is, is proceeds from our union with Christ and is brought about about from the atonement, uh-huh. 
this is atonement. Uh, it, it indicates that it's a shift. It's from a negative relationship to a positive relationship. It's broken from a broken relationship to a healthy relationship. He said Paul moves beyond this language of focus on restoring relationship to Christ and atonement of death. It provides restoring relationship with God and brings about a joy more literally and we boast and we go back to verse two, just to talk about the, the joy. It says, by whom we also have access by faith into the grace where within we stand and rejoice in the hope and the glory of God. That's what he's talking about, that grace that God gives us. We can't get that ourselves. We can't, we can't save ourselves. Only God can save us. But it comes from us to him. We have to open up our mouths and, and say, Lord, forgive me for I'm a sinner. And welcome him in. He said, atonement is a gracious act by which God restores the relationship and the harmony and the unity between himself and believers. The word contains parts of an expression that's greatly true and profound, but straightforward terms at one. Are you at one with God today? Uh huh. Through God's anointing grace and forgiveness and the reinstated and the relationship is being at one with God? Are you at one with God today? Well, listen to this. Salvation, entire works. It said for to be saved from wrath through him refers to the entire work of salvation from the moment of justification to the great right throne. If you don't want to go to the great right throne uh, not knowing who God is, Come, my friend, come. The wrath of God will be revealed to those who rejected the gospel of Jesus Christ. The apostle Jude uh, best described Christians containing work of salvation is, is able, it is able to uh, keep you from falling to the present and to the faultness before the presence of the glory, which is seated joy. He's telling you his joy on the other side. If you don't want to have joy, I wish this upon no one. Keep on living the way you're living. You won't get it. You'll get it. But God don't want that for you. He wants you to be reconciled to himself. Students, there's a little bit of homework. There's a little bit of homework for the students. He said, uh, this is interesting in the scripture, never presented in the life, uh, in life and faith, but being in the hopeful and the request as is his command. The Lord is aware of, of our weaknesses much more than we are. Oh yeah. He also knows our enemies and the challenges. He is still required our victorious outlook. He said, don't look at your, your situation as no way out. God always provides us a way out. And he said, when we are fearful, uh, fearful and unsettled, we are also not to focus on, uh, we're not to focus on that, but we are to focus on his assurance. And he said, now this is for the students. He said, I want you to do this. Take this week coming. And this is uh, to share this internal truth today's lesson. Tell at least two people. For example, Christ's death has not only reconciled us to God, but it em empowers us to live a godly life. It said, record this reaction with the people that you share with the good news and be prepared to share your experience with the class next week. Let us pray. Father, once, once again, we are amazed by your great love for us. Because of faith in Jesus, we are justified. We are, we are acquitted from guilt by your grace. How amazing that must, must be. And we are redeemed because of your love. We are reconciled. We are no longer your enemies, but we are at peace with you. And if you, and it isn't enough that we are atoned and are at one with you, we thank you for so much great salvation. We rejoice in the hope as Paul did and with, we will share this good news in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right.
Now, some of you that's listening out there, if you haven't had a chance to uh, give yourself to Christ, I'm gonna offer that to you in just a second. But if you have any questions with today's lesson, you can contact our superintendent, Elder James Bryant, Sunday School Superintendent. He can be reached at Otis Bryant at ImaniKojic.com. Again, that's Otis Bryant at ImaniKojic.com. Now, for those that are listening, if you want to be saved, it's simple as A, B, C. Accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Believe that he died on the cross, was buried, and on the third day, God the Father physically raised him from the dead. C, confess that you're a sinner and Jesus is the Lord. He is the Christ and Savior who can forgive you of your sins. Amen? Invite him into your heart today, and we welcome you to the family and the kingdom of God. Amen. Tomorrow, next week, I'm saying tomorrow. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. And this lesson is so good. Next week's lesson is coming. It's going to be coming out of Romans 10. 5 through 17, next week's lesson, salvation for all who believe. I'll leave you with that. Let us pray out. Thank you, Father God, for allowing us to come for the throne. Thank you for your lesson that Paul teach today. And we thank each and every listener that is here in the presence and those that are listening online, live stream. And we hope that this message reached their, their minds, their hearts, and their soul. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Thank God and amen. Thank you.